At this point, probably you are convinced that every machine learning project has these five steps. So maybe you have this question in mind. So is there any R library, any R package that can do this for me? So basically this guy, Max Kunt, had this idea a decade ago. So he decided to create a new package called classification and regression training. And this is pronounced carrot, like in the vegetable. And basically the idea was try to unify and to make an interface between all the existing models up to date and try to streamline everything. So if you repeat the same processes using the same functions again. Basically he mapped this idea, these five steps in this streamline. So basically any project has these ingredients. So you are visualizing your data, pre-processing in order to categorize some variables and to remove correlations between numerical variables, and then just splitting the data I mean, in training, testing, and validation, then running some model that could be logistic regression, KNN, support vector machine, whatever, and then evaluating the model. In this video, I'm going to show you that you can use these five functions that you have on the screen in order to, to follow these five steps. Okay, so let me show you a few examples. So for instance, feature plot is, uh, is a function that incorporates different plotting functions inside. Almost, almost all of them uh, borrowed from the lattice package. So here you have an example. So you load the library and you, you are going to explore this data set called Iris. If you take a look inside, you see these four numerical variables and this factor. So for instance, you can use a pairs planet plot in which you take this feature function and then you plot the four numerical variables and the color is going to be taken using this Y, this categorical variable. So if you run this, you see something like this. So as you can see here, you have a panel in which uh, for instance, in this plot, you're plotting sepal length versus sepal width, and the color is given by the species. Okay, so, so far so good. Next example, let's pre-process some data. So you can import the Titanic data set. I'm going to store the mean and the standard deviation of the variable age. I'm going to include this function, because if you remember from one of the videos, the Titanic data set has some NAs inside, value, inside the, the variable age. So basically, the syntax is pretty simple. So take the data set, and here, what I'm going to say is that I'm going to impute using the KNN method. And if you remember the video on KNN, the last slide was a, a, like a bonus track. And here I'm going to use KNN to guess what are the values of, of the missing ages. Okay. So now I'm going to call in this function predict. And I'm going to say that take this preprocess in which you are imputing everything that is missing and take the data set and create a new variable, okay, a new data set. If you plot the Titanic age for passengers, let's say 10 to 15, then you see that passengers 10, the age was 71, for 11, 47, for passengers 12, it was 19, and then we have three NAs. But with the new data set, using this KNN, I'm going to rescale back using the standard deviation and the mean, then you can create a new variables. This is like cheating somehow, because we are making up the, the, the ages of these passengers. But this is, I know, this is justified. If our data set is not large enough, we can try to guess what are the most credible uh, missing values for those passengers. Next example of preprocessing. Remember from our previous video, if you have a categorical value with five classes, in this case, five colors of the, of the hair, I'm going to create four binary values. And here you can do that using a uh, caret. Okay, so here is a fake data. So I'm going to create a data frame and one variable data frame is factorial with five levels. And then I'm going to call dummy bars and I'm going to say, okay, take this variable from this data set and this fall rank equals true means that I'm going to reduce in one variable. So in the end, as you can see here, I have these binary values. All of them have ones except the black one in which I have all zeros. So, so this is a very simple way to, to reduce five category, a, a categorical variable with five levels to four categorical variables. Next example, sometimes you have tons of functions. So this data set is crazy. You can, you can play a little bit with that. And here you have 342 features. So some, some of the features are not very interesting. So this function near zero var, basically what it's telling me is that remove from the data set all the variables that are not very interesting, that are close to zero. And here you can see the syntax. And after this simple call, calling to this near function, I have reduced from 342 to 297. So I've removed almost 50 variables from this data set. You can also use caret to create partitions from training and testing. And this is very simple. So for instance, take this data set, you, can, you have to install this library. 
and I, here I have 10,000 observations. So instead of using the sample function, I'm going to use this create data partitions, and I'm going to say, okay, take 75% of the data set for training and 25% for validation, for testing, okay? And here you can see the syntax is very simple. And if you make the nums, the, the, you make the calculations, here is the training and here is the testing. So the splitting is almost 75%. Train is, I would say, the queen of the carrot library because inside train you can put whatever you want. For instance, if you train with the method, method GLM and then you use this parameter for GLM for binomial, then you're doing a logistic regression. And you use the same exact syntax with the train, but you change the method to K and N, then you're, run, you're running K nearest neighbor. So I love this feature because it, you can run hundreds and hundreds of methods of, of classification methods with just the same syntax. And then you can you can you have to call to predict. Then you have the fitting, predict, new observation from this testing subset. Okay? And as you can see here, you can do whatever you want. In this case, I'm creating a confusion matrix to compare both methods. And in this case, it looks like uh, logistic regression performs better for this data set than KNN. Carrot has a function called resamples that allows you to compare between different fits. So you can use the library mlbench in order to plot the results and the syntax is very simple. So you resample the previous feeds that we have done in the previous slide and then you plot the results and you see something like this. So you can see that logistic regression has higher, higher accuracy than KNM. And also you can compute kappa which is a very interesting uh, statistic. And basically when kappa equals 1 that means that your classifier is perfect and when your kappa is 0 that means that your classifier is like throwing a coin and it's just classifying by pure or your chance, and if it's negative, it's worse than chance, which is the kind of depression. So basically, I invite you to, to explore the current library, install it if you don't have it already installed, and use the help and go to Max Kuhn's webpage in order to learn more about Carrot.